Hey everybody, Ron Bielefeld, Whistling Wings Photography. I've got the R7 in my hands again, but I'm not shooting it. Today in this video, we're going to go through my setup. I'm going to go through all of the menus and even some things outside the menu, setting up this camera for birds and birds in flight. So if you're interested in knowing how I've set up my R7, stay tuned. All right, here we go. We're talking about my setup of the Canon R7 for birds and birds in flight. Now, I'm going to start actually outside the menus. And I want to talk about what's in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. And that says FV, which stands for flexible value as far as I'm concerned. I usually would show an M there for full manual exposure where I can control the aperture, shutter speed, and ISO for my exposures and use the three dials that are on my R5 and my R3 to do so. One dial set up for each parameter. However, the Canon R7 does not have three dials. It has two. It has the main dial by the shutter button and your thumb wheel. And so what I've done is I've decided to use FV shooting mode, which allows me to use the thumb wheel. As you can see down now at the bottom of the screen, I can move what parameter I'm going to change, whether it be right now the shutter speed, the aperture, or the ISO with the main dial. So when I have that little orange wheel symbol over by the shutter speed, I can now use the main dial by the shutter button to change my shutter speed. If I move it over to aperture, I can change aperture. And if I move it over to ISO, I can change ISO. So with just the two dials, I can still control all three parameters very quickly of my manual exposure. This is still manual exposure. It's like being in M mode, shooting mode, but being able to use just two dials to control all three rather rapidly versus using three dials on the R3 or the R5. So kind of cool. So that's what I decided to do. So if you go into the first menu here, the shoot menu, looks like Canon's decided not to put the, the titles on these menus anymore, but this is what I used to call the shoot menu or what Canon used to call the shoot menu. Number one, number one tab. Image quality, C-RAW. I shoot C-RAW. That's all I shoot. I don't shoot a RAW and a JPEG. I shoot just C-RAW. And I'm going to show you something that people get confused about here. If you move over to RAW, oh, let me get up to where I need to be first. Come on. There we go. If we move over to RAW, it says you're going to get a 32 megapixel image. If I move over to C-RAW, I'm going to get ah, a 32 megapixel image. Changing between RAW and C-RAW does not change the size of the image, the, the, the dimensions of the image, or the resolution then, of course, of the image. What you will notice changing is that number in the brackets next to the dimensions of the image. On RAW, you're going to get 2,096 images on the card. That's what that means. If you go over to C-RAW, you're going to get 3,762. That means by going from RAW to C-RAW, what you're actually changing is just the size of each image file that's going onto your card and eventually onto your computer, more than likely. So how does Canon do that? They make the C-RAW, they do something with the color data and how they encode it in C-RAW that makes the file smaller. That's what I heard from Canon. That's really correct, and that's what's going on. But the main point here is that you're not losing resolution from going RAW to C-RAW. RAW to C-RAW just changes the size of the actual files. Okay, so that said, I shoot C-RAW for a reason is smaller files, more buffer. 
lets me shoot more frames before I hit the buffer wall. Dual pixel raw, disabled. Still image ratio is three to two, that's the standard. Exposure comp, a lot of this stuff we're gonna roll right through because it has nothing to do with setting up this camera for birds and birds in flight, optimizing the camera's performance for that. Nothing going on with exposure, ISO speed settings, HDR, auto lighting optimizer off, highlight tone priority off, anti-flicker, we don't worry about that, that's just for shooting in gyms and, and arenas and stuff like that. Okay, not worried about external speed light control. Metering mode, I'm shooting manual. The so metering doesn't do anything to my uh, exposure. So I have it set to evaluative. If you want to go in here, you can look at it. There's evaluative, there's partial metering, there's spot metering, and there's center weighted average. All right, sometimes um, on my R5 anyway, I have it set to spot metering because that puts a circle in the center of the frame and gives me a reference to the center of frame when I'm shooting on tracking autofocus modes because, of course, your, your um, let's just call it an autofocus point is moving around with the bird. If it's locked onto it, it's not staying in the center. So it's easy sometimes to lose perspective of where the bird is in the frame. That circle helps. Here on the R7, like on the R3, it's not as big a problem because Canons, when you look through the viewfinder, it looks a little different. There's a little dot right in the center of the frame that tends to stay there. Um, and I've also gotten used to the whole fact of the thing moving around and actively uh, composing my shots, keeping the bird in the frame where I want it. So for right now, it's set to uh, evaluative metering. White balance at the very top here. I do not shoot. Auto white balance. I shoot a Kelvin value, 6100, 6300, something like that, because it gives me more uh, continuity between my images as far as what they look like uh, color wise. And so that just kind of eliminates a step a lot of times for me in post processing. Of course, you can shoot whatever you want here and you can change it in post processing without any uh, penalty whatsoever. But I like to shoot a Kelvin value. No custom white balance, no white balance shifting, color space set to Adobe RGB simply because if there's a color space that's available, I always pick the white, widest uh, color gamut I can. Picture style set to auto. Of course, that doesn't really affect your raw data coming out of the camera, but it can uh, be applied to post processing depending on what. Uh, program you're using, so be aware of that. Clarity, set the center, whatever, medium, middle, not really, again, have any bearing on your raw images coming out of your camera. On JPEGs, yes. On what you're seeing on the back of the screen and through the viewfinder when you're reviewing images on the camera, yes. Creative shooting filters of any kind, no. Not worried about that for birds. Lens aberration correction, nope because I like to do that kind of stuff in post-processing. I don't want double stuff going on sometimes. Uh, if you do it in a camera and then something happens in post-processing, I like to just keep that stuff off in the camera. <clears throat> long exposure noise reduction, off. We don't use long exposures for birds most of the time, so it doesn't really come into play. Uh, noise reduction set to default. And so yeah, just don't gotta worry about dust delete data. It's an active thing and we're not gonna do it. Um, don't have any dust that really is bothering me on my sensor at this point. And if I did, I'd just clean my sensor. All right, so number six, all this stuff disabled. Has nothing to do. Now, if you want to do focus bracketing, you can. It's, gonna, it's a process that you do in DPP, which is Canon's uh, post-processing or photo uh, processing software. And this is going to be another video that I'm going to do because there's more to it than just turning it on or off. There's a number of shots thing, there's a focus increment, there's exposure smoothing, there's depth, too much to go into here when we're talking about just setting up this camera, optimizing it for birds and birds in flight. But a video on this coming up. Let's go on to tab number seven here, drive mode. I have it set to H because generally speaking, if you come down here, I shoot an electronic shutter and that means I'll be shooting 15 frames per second, which on this camera is important because you have a very shallow buffer and I don't want to run out of buffer in one second if I went up here 
and put it on to high speed, that's 30 frames per second. Good for some things, not good for most things. So I'm going to, most scenarios, shooting scenarios. So I'm gonna keep it set to H. And you know what? I'm actually gonna come down here and turn this back to mechanical because coming up in the menu here is going to be another setting I wanna talk about. And it's easier to talk about if you have your shutter mode set to mechanical and set to drive mode H because that's when it comes into play. That's when it's actually active. So anyway, bulb, no. Interval timer, no. Uh, shutter release without card, no. Here we go. <clears throat> Image stabilizer mode. This is an enhanced digital IS. I turn it off. Don't want that. Auto level disable. This is very important. Please pay attention if you don't want your birds all warpy looking from what I call uh, enhanced rolling shutter effect. This camera, if you turn auto leveling on, will auto level. If you tilt your camera and get it off level, it will do its best to level the image for you. This can be a problem if you're panning with a bird and it's auto leveling as you're not being totally level and the bird's going one direction, the auto leveling's correcting in another direction and you get this rolling shutter, enhanced rolling shutter, and it warps your bird really weird. I saw that and I was kind of freaking out about the R7 at first. Then I turned this to disable and all that went away. I didn't see any more distorted birds. So please, for birds in flight, birds in general, just turn auto level off. Turn it to disable like I have it here. Custom quick controls, we're not gonna go into that. Doesn't really have any bearing on things so much. Now, this is what I was referring to when I set to my drive mode speed, frames per second speed, to H and not H plus, and to mechanical because there's a menu setting here called high speed display, something that's very important if you are going to shoot mechanical shutter in drive mode H, that's 6.5 frames per second, because if you do not turn on high speed display, like it is now, you will find it very difficult to pan with birds because the viewfinder is gonna have lag in it and blackout in it and it's gonna be almost impossible to track flying birds. So have it set to on, and every time you find yourself in mechanical in the H drive mode, that's 6.5 frames per second, this will automatically be on for you, and you will be able to track birds much better through the viewfinder. Really important for birds in flight. Not so much for static birds maybe, but for birds in flight, really important. Metering timer, who cares? Uh, display simulation right here at the top. Exposure simulation, of course. One of the big advantages of shooting a mirrorless camera. You can see your exposure through the viewfinder. It makes it so much easier to get your exposures correct. So of course it's set to exposure simulation here. I'm not gonna go over your optical viewfinder simulation. Don't use it. Shooting info display, you can go in here. There's a whole bunch of different things that you can turn on and off. Uh, this is just personal preference stuff. It does not really have anything to do with uh, optimizing this camera for uh, birds or birds in flight other than potentially decluttering your viewfinder. I like to pick a viewfinder that doesn't have a whole bunch of information in there. Just show me the scene, show me the bird so I can keep it in the frame. I minimize what is displayed in my viewfinder. Uh, I'm not going to talk about reverse display. Actually, I should turn that off. Nah, keep it on. Because when you flip it around, you want it to reverse. So anyhow. Um, viewfinder display format. Again, personal preference. You want it that way or that way? That way or that? I don't know. Display one's fine for me. However, display performance. Very important to have it set to smooth because that increases the refresh rate of the viewfinder, the electronic viewfinder, and that makes it much easier to track moving subjects. So that's an important one there. Moving on to number 10, it's all video stuff. So we're just gonna skip right on to autofocus. Go up to the top, servo. 
your birds are generally going to be moving closer or further away as you're shooting. We don't want it on one shot, right? One shot. Nope. We want it on servo. Autofocus area is not something that you really uh, change here in the menu system for the most part. I use the autofocus point button and then use the multifunction button up by the shutter button to scroll through them. Or if I have a camera, if I have the camera attached to a lens that has the, um, the control ring, then I'll, I have my control ring set to setting my autofocus area. Right now it's on flexible zone number two. But again, not really something you do within the menu very often. Subject tracking is the same way. Right now it's on, but there's a way to do it with the buttons. And that way is by using the point select button and then hitting the info button, which will be a toggle for on and off subject tracking while you're shooting, not going into the menu here. Here in the menu, yes, we're going to select animals here because birds are animals. Eye detection right now is enabled. You can turn this on or off. I have it enabled now because it works really, really well 90% of the time for 90% of the, uh, the scenarios I find myself in, but you can turn it off and that way the camera's autofocus system won't have to look for an eye if the scenario you're shooting in doesn't give you a very clean eye to, to look at on the bird very much. Why have it look for an eye? Just have it look for the head or the body right away. Maybe things will be quicker that way. Switching checked subjects, I have set to the initial priority because when I get the bird locked on, I don't want the camera switching to another subject very easily. So I put initial priority as my setting. And this setting, along with your case settings, which are coming up here, uh, if you have it set the way I do, which is to basically hang on to and lock on to a subject once it's got it, you've got to remember that if you're using a back button or even half press, of the shutter button for autofocus initiation that you're going to have to pump it if it misses. Don't just sit there and hold the button down and wait for the autofocus system to retry on its own because these settings that I have set basically make it not do that. It makes it not retry. If you want it to retry, you have to tell it to retry and that's by pumping the buttons. By pumping the, either the back button that you are using or the half press. All right, so right now I'm on case two. And this is what I was just talking about. Tracking sensitivity all the way negative. XL D-cell tracking all the way positive. A very stable autofocus setting for staying locked on to the subject that you're on. Now, in my other cameras, I have it set to auto because I found that it works really, really well. That way is it basically works just like uh, case two for me in most of my scenarios. So why do I have it two here and not auto? Well, because it's a new camera to me and I'm still messing around with it. So right now I can tell you that auto pretty much in this camera, the R7 does act quite a bit like case two in the shooting scenarios I'm in. So more than likely I'll end up going back to the auto setting eventually, like I have my R5 and my R3 setup. All right. So moving on to number, let's see, moving on to number three in the autofocus menu. I don't care about one shot so much. I don't care about preview. Lens drive when the autofocus is impossible. Yes, I want it to. I want it to cycle. I want it to keep trying. Uh, autofocus assist beam firing turned on. Touch drag off limit my autofocus areas. Nope. Right now I'm still messing with all of them. So they're all available to me. All of them are available. I may end up turning some of those off eventually, uh, but for right now, I have not limited them at all. Uh, no big deal. The rest of those, uh, manual focus peaking settings. Sure, if I find myself in manual focus for some reason shooting birds, why not have peaking settings turned on? I have them on and I have them on high and I have the color red. You can choose what you like. Focus guide, why not? Again, if you find yourself in manual focus, have the focus guide on. Uh, movie servo auto, we're not going to talk about movie stuff. That's down here. Focus guide. Yeah. Movie servo, not going to worry about it. All right. Electronic full time manual focus off. Electronic lens electronic manual focus off. The rest of this stuff default down here. I don't want my manual focus rings on my lenses to work when I'm in autofocus. If that capability is there to turn that off, I do it because I can bump 
those rings while I'm panning with a fast subject and I don't want manual focus rings trying to counteract what my autofocus is trying to do and vice versa. It just doesn't work well that way. All right, not a whole lot to talk about in the play menu here. I will go over a couple things. Let's see. Uh, na, 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 na. Oops, well, I didn't mean to go through that fast. Highlight alert. Love having my blinkies on. Autofocus point display when you're reviewing your images to show you the square. Sure, why not? Gives you a little bit of information. Why not take that information? Go back here, make sure I didn't uh, change any or just go by something without uh, talking about it if it's important. I don't think there's anything else there. I'm not going to go anything over the communications menu. I'm not going to deal with anything in there. Let's go into the wrench menu here, the setup menu, and Record the card, you know, when you record to your cards, you've got some options. And the main one for me when shooting stills is to auto switch cards if the first card gets full or the card I'm shooting to gets full. Because for me, again, I'm not a wedding photographer. I don't need to back up my images. What I don't want to happen is one card to fill right when the best action of my life is happening in front of me and it doesn't auto switch to the next card to let me keep shooting. So for me, auto switch card is the best. I've had very few card failures in the field, basically none. So for me, that works. Um, I record to the first card as, as a priority. That's that setting, but there's not a whole lot uh, really important uh, there other than switching cards automatically. Nothing else here that's really important. Nothing there. Now, beep enabled. Yes. But just like the Canon R3, this is important to have that enabled because you can have a shutter volume, you can have a fake shutter noise turned on and you can hear it when you shoot in an electronic shutter. Can't do that in the R5 still, don't know why. But anyway, I have it set to a very low volume, but now I can hear myself shooting when I'm in electronic shutter. And you can also control the volume of the beep for focusing and things like that. I turn those all the way down because I don't want my camera beeping every time it gets focus on something. It's annoying to me. I think it's annoying to people shooting around me. So I turn those things down. But anyway, beep enable. Power savings, go down here if you want. Screen dimmer, 10 seconds. Power off, automatically 10 minutes. I have it set to relatively long uh, duration. But anyhow, you can go through that. Nothing really super important there. Oops, skipped one again. Uh, this is all personal preference stuff. Nothing that really has anything to do with shooting birds, birds in flight. Except for again, maybe cluttering or not uncluttering the, the viewfinder so that you can see your bird better. Touch control, sensitivity, standard, and shutter. Oh, shutter at shutdown. Sure, put the shutter down, protects your sensor, keeps the dust off of it a little bit more, stuff like that. Uh, no camera resets. Custom shooting modes. I have none set up uh, for this camera yet. I might set some up, but. For right now, I don't have any. Let's move on to the custom function menu, which is on tab number one, exposure in increments, third of, a, third of a stop. You can go to half stop if you want, but I like a finer adjustment available to me, so that's what I set it to. Uh, all this other stuff is really not important, so I'm not gonna spend time on it here. Number two, Ah, the top one here, same exposure for new aperture. Do you have a zoom lens that has a variable aperture? So it changes apertures as you zoom in and out. If you do, setting this to ISO would be great. There's some other options in here. You can set it to change your shutter speed or a combination of ISO and, and shutter speed. But I like just to go with the ISO because that way it keeps your exposure the same as you zoom in and out and the aperture changes. And so I like that. I have not limited anything here as far as shutter speed range or aperture range, so we're not going to go into anything there. All this is pretty much default up the top here, the directions that the wheels turn and what they do, but customize buttons. My half press of the shutter button is metering start only, no autofocus there. The multifunction button says it's start-stop tracking. It does do that when you're shooting, but 
it also I also have it set up a different way to start start and stop tracking, uh, which we'll go over in a minute. ISO button is set to ISO, but I don't use the ISO button to set ISO. I already showed you what I do. I, have, I use FV mode, and, and that allows me to, um, to do it with just the two dials. Autofocus on is set to metering and autofocus start. And so that, by pressing the autofocus on button, if it's set this way, it will use whatever autofocus area I have chosen. Uh, and it will initiate autofocus with that area. And if I have tracking on and stuff like that, it'll use it. I have my asterisk button set to register and recall a shooting function. And the main reason is so that I can have this be a direct link to spot autofocus. And not just using spot by pressing the asterisk button, but also tracking at this at this uh, juncture, it's going to use subject tracking and it's going to track animals and it's going to use eye detection. I could turn that on and off if I want, obviously. But this is a direct connection to spot autofocus with tracking by pressing the asterisk button. By setting this up, the asterisk button set up as a register recall a shooting function. Now, this is different between. The autofocus point select button is not set up on my R7 like it is on my R3 and my R5. I have this set up to be my spot autofocus. But as you will see, there are no autofocus options to be set for this button. It doesn't give, it, give you that ability. And it's for a good reason, really, because... You can't really put your thumb on that button, press it, and shoot at the same time. It's just very awkward. So this stays as the point autofocus point selection button for me, and there's good reasons for that. And I can show you the reasons for that here because it allows you to do different things. I just pressed that button, and now I can cycle through by using the multifunction button my different autofocus areas. So that's one thing. Also, now if I hit the info button, I can toggle. You can see it toggling, tracking, subject tracking on and off, or leave it on. If I hit that button again, the point selection button, now I can use the two dials to change my flexible zone size and shape. So for me, that's how I've got it set up. I've got the, let's go in there again, I've got this the autofocus point select button to just be what it defaults to. Okay, so let's move on down to the depth of field preview button. And this is something I haven't really expounded on yet in this video, but the reason why I'm leaving my autofocus on button to be the basic autofocus initiation and metering start it's because there are only two functional back buttons for autofocus initiation on the R7 versus three of them on the R5 and the R3. So I want to have a way to, if I set it up the way I have it on my R3 and my R5, the autofocus on button would be a dedicated button linking to eye detect with tracking autofocus. The problem is then if I do that on the R7 then I have two dedicated back buttons for autofocus. Dedicated, one dedicated to eye detect and one dedicated to spot. And I really don't have any flexibility to change my autofocus areas at all or to turn eye detection tracking on or off. So I'm relegated really to using the autofocus on button in the general setting of just autofocus initiation and, and metering initiation and using eye detection, getting my eye detection through, through that setup and then being able to turn eye detection on and off because sometimes I want to turn eye detection off. So that's why I've got this button, the autofocus on button set the way it is in the R7. So now down here I'm going to use the depth of field preview button and we're going to go ahead and set that to toggle eye detection on and off. So now when I hit the depth of field button, if we get out of here, you can see and that button's on the front of the camera. 
eye detection off, eye detection on, eye detection off, eye detection on. So that pretty much allows me to use the autofocus on button and go to, let's say, the whole zone, the full frame zone, and have eye detection on and we have the same scenario that I would have if I did my autofocus on button the way I have it set up on the R5 and the R3, which is a direct link through the custom buttons to eye detection with tracking autofocus. So this gives me the flexibility I need given I only have two functional autofocus initiation buttons on the R7. And that again is the autofocus on button and the asterisk button. So I'm going to have my depth of field preview button set up to be toggling eye detection on and off. Because again, sometimes in certain scenarios, when the eye of the bird isn't going to be very prevalent and it's going to be hard for the autofocus system to even find an eye, I don't want it to even look for an eye. So I go ahead and turn eye detection off and the autofocus seems to function better just looking for the body of the bird, the head of the bird, whatever. So there you go. If we go out to custom dials, the only thing I've changed here is that the control ring will control my autofocus areas. Let me select my autofocus areas. Again, I have it set to FV, so I use uh, the two dials to set all three parameters. So it's really not, the dials aren't really being, the controls that the dials give me here are not really what they show here because of that FV selection that I talked about at the very beginning. Uh, let's see, we're not worried about much of this stuff. Not worried about that. Hey, the last thing we've got here is my menu, my menu number one, one tab, and all I added in there was format card because I wanted easy access to being able to format my cards when I put them in my camera. So, that was a pretty complete run through of how I have my camera set up. I'll go back and uh, we'll discuss a little bit more about the R7 and its setup and we'll finish up from there. All right, so there's my setup for the Canon R7. I haven't had the camera a long time, but given that the Canon R7 is very much like my R3 and my R5, I don't know how much more uh, I'm going to change my settings at this point. It's been working really well for me, so I think more than likely the settings are going to stay pretty much the same moving forward. So do you have any questions? If you've got questions, leave comments, comment section of the video, and I will get to you, get to the questions as soon as I possibly can. And hey, if you like the video, if you like the content of my channel, please subscribe. It's always nice to get new subscribers. It keeps me motivated to continue to do videos. And of course, it helps uh, keep the channel uh, going. So do that if you can. Select notifications as well. That way you'll know when I post a new video. Until next time, I hope you have great light. I hope you get great images. Be safe out there. I'll see you soon.